please be seated. Let us now join together in prayer. God of all times, all places, and all peoples, we gather this afternoon to ask your blessing on Salem Academy and College as we give thanks for the founders and the many leaders of our community throughout the years. Today, we especially ask your blessing on our new leader, President Lorraine Starrett. Inspire in her person your likeness through compassionate strength, exuberant joy, deep listening, persistent caring, and spiritual fitness. May she be known for the vision you have given her, the ability to create community, the love for all unique individuals, and for all the lives she will touch through many years of faithful service. Also be present, we ask, in the hearts of all who offer themselves as members of this community. Empower each one of us with kindness when we think we are not able. Move us towards compassion at times when divisiveness appears more easily. Lead us to fulfill our mission and vision as our forebears at Salem have done for so many years. O Divine One, be lifted up in the eyes and life and work of your beloved daughter, Lorraine Starrett. And may this day stand as a threshold of blessing for all teachers, all learners, all workers, and all players who sojourn here in this your living, learning community of scholars on the sacred ground of Salem. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of the Salem Academy and College Board of Trustees, I'm honored to greet you today as we gather to celebrate Salem's legacy of outstanding education for young women, and as we formally install Dr. D.E. Lorraine Sterrett as the 20th president of Salem Academy and College. And as I look out, and I've never done this before, to be here at the Dell, as I look out and see the May Dell, I see Academy and College students who are talented scholars, wonderful athletes, curious scientists, accomplished performers, significant leaders. You are the reason that we're all here. I see dedicated faculty and staff, enthusiastic alums, parents, friends, fellow board members. Your love of Salem enables us to continue to provide a premier educational experience for our students year after year, century after century. You are the heart of this institution. I'm also pleased to see visiting dignitaries and representatives from some of the nation's acclaimed academic institutions. We welcome all of you to Salem, and we thank you for sharing this special day with us. I'm especially delighted to welcome President Starrett's husband, Bert Lane, our great friend, her sister, Anne Hume, and her brother, Nigel Starrett, from Ireland, along with many of her friends and former colleagues. Welcome. On this Founders' Day, as we reflect on Salem's rich past, let us also consider our place in the present. Enrollments have increased at both institutions, both the academy and the college, and our Women of Purpose campaign has raised more than $30 million to date, and we've just got started. Construction is well underway on our new college residence, the McHugh Sisters Flats, and plans have been announced for a new sciences and mathematics building, along with residence hall renovations and technology enhancements at the academy. Our academy students continue to be accepted at top tier colleges and universities across the country, and our college students graduate, enroll in graduate programs, medical school, law school, everywhere. So our campus is strong. Our students are successful. And with your wonderful continued support and under the leadership of President Sterrett, we can be assured of Salem's position at the forefront of women's education in America and in the world. So may this day become a shining moment for Salem and carry us forward into the future.
The Elizabeth Ersterlein Award is the highest honor that a senior at the academy and college can receive. The recipients of the Ersterlein Award must have attended Salem Academy or college for four years. They have exemplified quality leadership during those four years and have made notable contributions to the quality of life at Salem. They have held leadership positions for most of their stay at Salem and have performed their duties with distinction. They have been conscientious and diligent in their pursuit of excellence and have maintained a high academic average. Carl Scholand will present the Ersterlein Award to this year's recipient from the Academy Senior Class, and then Ellis Herman, the 2014 College Ersterlein recipient, will present this year's award to the College Ersterlein recipient. When Sister Ersteline started this wonderful school, she did so with only three little girls, all of whom lived within a stone's throw of the school's room in which they were being taught. Fast forward 243 years, and when we began deciding on this year's recipient of the Ersteline Award, I'm pleased to say that we had a few more girls to choose from, and we also had a little more geographic diversity in our candidate pool. In fact, this year's winner lives a little more than a stone's throw from campus. Unless, of course, you know somebody that can throw a stone all the way to Beijing. Anchi Duan's resume is impressive. She's this year's House Council President, a member of Spirit and Glee Club. She's played volleyball, basketball, and has been a part of the swim team. She's in the National Honor Society, and although she's currently taking AP Chemistry, AP World History, and AP English Literature, she still has managed to maintain a GPA above 4.4. Not bad when you consider English is her second language. Most of all, however, it is Anchi's character that really stands out. In fact, listen to the words of last year's Ersteline recipient, Catherine Ward. When describing Anchi, she says, Admirable intellect and numerous talents are impressive in themselves, but Anchi is a true blessing to the entire Salem community, utterly deserving of this award because in addition to these factors, she is a young woman of virtue, possessing a truly kind heart 
and remarkable character. Always kind, always positive, always helpful to others. She is a remarkable young woman and a very deserving recipient of the 2015 Salem Academy Sister Ursuline Award, Anchi Duan of Beijing, China. Hello, I am so thrilled and honored and filled with joy to be back on Salem's beautiful campus today to celebrate Founders Day, the presidential inauguration, and to present the 2015 Elizabeth Ersterlein Award. This year's recipient has served Salem in many ways over the last four years. As a member of Fremden Dienerin, as an honor guide, and as an orientation leader, she has welcomed prospective and new students and families to, her, to our campus with her bright personality and kind demeanor. Through her service in multiple clubs and organizations, and by serving in the Student Government Association, this year's recipient demonstrates strong leadership and has garnered the respect of her peers and of the faculty and staff. Her courage and pioneering spirit have enhanced the campus community's understanding of diverse faith backgrounds, and she has played a major role in the growth of the Muslim Student Association on the campus. During all four years at Salem, this year's recipient has invested in her professional development by serving on the Committee for the Women's Conference and completing a variety of internships, including positions with the Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center, Novant Health, Vila, Strategic Marketing and Public Relations, Crosby Scholars, and in offices on Salem's campus. As the president of the class of 2015, she has led more than 50% of the senior class to participate in Salem's annual giving program. That's a lot of people. When naming this year's recipient, the selection committee noted that Salem has truly been forever transformed by her presence and by her involvement on our campus. Please join me in congratulating the 2015 Elizabeth Ersterlein Award recipient, Farina Backus. <laughs> Good afternoon, and again, welcome to this very special day on the campus of Salem Academy and College. My name is Anna Barrier, and I am a fourth year Academy senior. On behalf of all Academy students, I would like to express my enthusiasm toward the official inauguration of our new president, Dr. Lorraine Starrett. While I have no doubt that Dr. Starrett's presence has been highly instrumental on the college side of our campus, her impact on Salem Academy after only one year has been nothing short of extraordinary. 
Not only do we thank Dr. Starrett for her leadership in the Women of Purpose campaign, which, much to the delight of my peers, will bring additional merit scholarships and financial aid to Academy students, upgraded technology for our classrooms, and the big one, of course, dormitory renovations with universal air conditioning in every room. <laughs> but also, we thank Dr. Stewart for her dedication to preserving the spirit and traditions of the Salem campus with every word, idea, and endeavor. With Dr. Stewart's help, I am confident that future classes of Salem Academy will continue to grow, surpass expectations, break records, redefine stereotypes, and show just how powerful, insightful, and meaningful the women of our world can be. Once again, on behalf of my peers at Salem Academy, we welcome you, Dr. Starrett, to our campus and greatly appreciate your dedication to the school many of us call home. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome students, faculty, guests, and everyone to today's ceremonies. I am Talitha Schrader, Salem College Student Government President. I've never felt as if I can speak for an entire student body on something, but this is something I feel quite comfortable with, welcoming President Sarah and telling you all what a fantastic fit she has been with this campus. She has accepted and what seems like enjoyed many of our traditions and oddities. Right now, as a senior, I am honored to share in this tradition of Founders Day with her inauguration as our 20th president. So welcome, and as I am not one to be long-winded, let's on with the show. Good afternoon. Dr. Starrett, trustees, and all members of the Salem Academy and college community, dignitaries and guests, I greet you on this day of great celebration. Dr. Starrett, I know you don't want today to be about you, but it kind of is. <laughs> so on behalf of the Salem Academy alumni who are here today, as well as the nearly 3,000 Academy alumni around the world, it is my honor to welcome you and the presence of those who believe in you to your position as the 20th president of Salem. In the short time that you've been here, you've exhibited the characteristics of the Moravian single sisters who founded our beloved institution. You value relationships. You're financially savvy with a strong business sense. You're a woman of faith. You're willing to question what is widely accepted. You persevere, and you aren't afraid to take risks to achieve goals. And while you may not have walked from Pennsylvania to North Carolina to get here as our founders did, you certainly are traveling just as vigorously. Salem Academy students and graduates are undoubtedly making our world a better and more colorful place. Unfortunately, that world is full of people who quickly question the future of all girls' high schools and women's colleges. Well, clearly, they don't know Salem, and they haven't met you Dr. Starrett. So on behalf of your sisters who graduated from Salem Academy, thank you for accepting the tremendous and exciting mission that is before you. Thank you for embracing our purple and gold. Go purple. And thank you for honoring our Moravian heritage and Salem sisters of the past. The Salem Academy alumni are forever behind you, cheering you on as we are all forever Salem. On behalf of the College Alumni Association, I would like to offer our congratulations to Dr. Starrett on the occasion of her inauguration as the 20th President of Salem Academy and College. President Starrett, in your short time here, you have already taken the time to go and meet so many of the alumni of this college. You have shared with us your plans to increase awareness of this institution in our region and the nation. You have a host of new projects on tap, including an ambitious campus master plan, and have demonstrated outstanding intellect, 
talent, and experience in building institution community partnerships. You have the enthusiasm and can-do spirit to inspire others to excellence. We congratulate you on your successes to date. The College Alumni Association looks forward to many, many more years of working with you and watching this institution reach new heights of accomplishment under your leadership. Welcome everyone to this beautiful day. On behalf of Salem Academy's faculty and staff, it is my great honor and pleasure to extend to you, Dr. Starrett, a very warm and gracious welcome to the Salem Academy and College family. It's an even greater pleasure to congratulate you on your inauguration today, a joyous occasion to celebrate the Salem that we all love. During the course of our presidential search last spring, our mission was to find a president who is not only a scholar, but one who has the vision, compassion, and energy to lead us forward. I think we were successful in that mission. We at the Academy look forward to working with you, Dr. Starrett, for many, many years to come. President Starrett, it is a great honor to welcome you on behalf of the Salem College faculty. Since your arrival last summer, we have been impressed by your energy, your warmth, your intellect, and by that mischievous twinkle in your eye. We have discovered that you share our commitment to the liberal arts and to Salem's mission as a women's college, and our belief in the transformative power of a Salem education. You've also impressed us by your understanding of the need to balance respect for Salem's rich Moravian heritage and traditions with a dynamic approach to Salem's future growth and development. The faculty looks forward to exciting times ahead. And since you and I share a common field of specialization, I would like to add something personal. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue à notre communauté, désormais la vôtre. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue à notre famille, désormais la vôtre. It sounds better in French, but <laughs> just in case a few of you in the audience didn't quite catch that, I bid you welcome to our community henceforth your own. I bid you welcome to our family, henceforth your own. On Salem Square, the shining columns of Main Hall stand side by side with the entryway to home Moravian Church. The buildings are so close together that they give the appearance of being one. That architectural fact bears witness to the importance that we Moravians have placed on education for nearly 560 years. And when our forebears came to this place, they brought a then novel idea that all people, including girls and women, should be educated for the transformation of the world. That idea became tangible in the founding and the development of what is now this institution. Together today, we are the stewards of that grand idea. Dr. Starrett, on behalf of the Moravian Church Southern Province, I welcome you. We celebrate this new beginning. We will continue working together to further the vision and the values and the vitality that is expressed in and through Salem Academy and College. God richly bless your presidency. Dr. Starrett, other platform guests, Board of Visitors and Board of Trustees, 
distinguished faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alan Joins, the mayor of the city of Winston-Salem, and it's my distinct honor and pleasure to be here today in a special day in the life of Salem College, certainly, but also a special day in the life of Winston-Salem. I bring you greetings on behalf of our 237,000 citizens here in Winston-Salem. Dr. Sterrett, you come to Winston-Salem at a time of transformation. I know Salem prides itself on transforming young women. Winston-Salem has had to transform itself from an old manufacturing city to one based on knowledge industries, and we've made good progress in that regard, but now we have to go that next step. We have to make sure that Winston-Salem is a city that embraces innovation and rapid change. In order to do that, we must have the collaboration, cooperation of our institutions of higher education, such as Salem College, and your role will be pivotal in the success of Winston-Salem. It's been said that Dr. Sterrett hit the ground running. I believe she may have hit the ground flying, actually, in my uh, estimation. And I, as mayor, look forward to working with her and this wonderful institution as we move Winston-Salem into the future as that city of innovation and rapid change. Welcome to our community. Mr. Chairman, Madam President, and all members of the Salem community, I'm delighted to be here today to bring you great greetings from higher education, including colleges for women across our country, and especially from the 36 independent colleges and universities in North Carolina, the 16 public universities, and the 58 community colleges. I am often on programs with my public sector colleagues and I will admit that I probably enjoy more than I should when I hear references to the founding of the state university system in 1789, and then I get to explain that private higher education in North Carolina traces its roots to 1772 when the young... <laughs> when the young women who had walked more than 500 miles to North Carolina founded the school that is now Salem Academy and College how far Salem has come over these years, but it also retains much of its foundation, a caring community where faculty and students focus on teaching and learning, where classes are small and professors and administrators are committed role models and mentors inside and outside the classrooms. President Sterrett, we celebrate today your personal commitment to leading Salem Academy and College embracing both the history and the proud traditions of this institution while focusing on a dynamic vision for the future. The presidents of our state and countries, other colleges and universities join me in wishing you, your family, and the entire extended Salem Academy and College community great success. Spricht der 
recognition of her Irish heritage and her career as a scholar, Dr. Sterrett selected the following poem to be read at her inauguration. The Scholar and Her Cat, Ponger Bon. I and Ponger Bon, my cat, tis a like task we are at. Hunting mice is his delight, Hunting words, I sit all night. Better far than praise of men, tis to sit with book and pen. Ponger bears me no ill will, he too plies his simple skill. Tis a merry task to see at our task how glad are we. When at home we sit and find entertainment to our mind. Oftentimes a mouse will stray in the hero Panger's way. Oftentimes, my keen thought set takes a meaning in its net. Against the wall, he sets his eye, full and fierce and sharp and sly. Against the wall of knowledge, I all my little wisdom try. When a mouse darts from its den, oh, how glad is Ponger then. Oh, what gladness do I prove when I solve the doubts I love. So, in peace, our task we ply, Ponger, Bon, my cat, and I. In our arts we find our bliss, I have mine, and he has his. Practice every day has made Ponger perfect in his trade. I get wisdom day and night, turning darkness into light. Dr. Sterrett, will you please step forward? This is the moment. <laughs> Dr. Sterrett, the Board of Trustees of Salem Academy and College has chosen you to join the long line of visionaries stretching back more than two centuries, men and women committed to making the ideal of equality in education and advancement and opportunity for women a reality.
This medallion bears the great seal of Salem Academy and College. The three Greek letters are Kappa, Gamma, and Delta, standing for Greek words meaning knowledge and virtue. We are confident that in your leadership you will take this motto to heart. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I place this seal over your shoulders as a symbol of your high office and of the privilege and responsibility you now hold. The chaplain knows how to do that uh, <laughs> clasp. So ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. Starrett, by the authority of the Board of Trustees of Salem Academy and College, you are vested with the powers and privileges and charged with the duties and responsibilities of the Office of President of Salem Academy and College. Thank you. Thank you so much. With a full heart, I accept the considerable responsibilities of the office conferred by the Board of Trustees, and I promise to lead the institution with a vision for our future that will rally and unite faculty students, staff, and alumni for the glory of Salem ever. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to introduce the 20th president of Salem Academy and College, Dr. D.E. Lorraine Sterrett. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the Board of Visitors, alumni, faculty, staff, students, colleagues from far and near, friends, and family. That would be my American family, otherwise known as Bert, and my Irish family, represented by my sister Anne and my brother Nigel, who have traveled from Ireland to be with us today. And all the family members and friends, whether in the United States or in Ireland or elsewhere, who are joining us via live stream. To everyone, I extend my heartfelt welcome to our beautiful campus and my heartfelt gratitude for your joining us in this magical place on this joyous occasion. Let me also say a very special word of thanks to Trustee Beth Rader and the Presidential Search Committee without whom I would not be here. <laughs> to Margaret Pike, class of 94, and her merry band of helpers for their many months of extraordinary work in introducing me to the Salem family far and near. And to Gwyn Stevens Taylor, class of 72, and her merry band of helpers, including Judy Line and Lynn Stewart, class of 97, for their many months of extraordinary work in planning this inauguration. Without them, y'all would not be here. <laughs> many presidents note in their inaugural addresses that they are honored and humbled to lead a great institution. I too am honored and humbled to lead a great institution. Indeed, never more humbled than this past fall 
when I began hosting a series of receptions for Salem faculty and staff in my backyard. One faculty member brought her seven-year-old daughter with her. She introduced me to her daughter, and she said to her daughter, this is our new president. Do you remember I told you we were going to meet our president? This daughter responded most disappointedly, I thought you meant Barack Obama. <laughs> Lest there be any ambiguity, I am being inaugurated today as president of Salem Academy and College. But let it be noted for the record that since this great institution was founded in 1772, four years before the Declaration of Independence, I am presiding over a great institution that is four years older than the great institution over which Mr. Obama presides. Imagine, imagine what it took for the Moravians to find a school for girls in 1772, a school that grew into the Salem Academy and College of 2015. Those Moravians knew they were on to a good thing. Today, Salem is recognized as the oldest continuously operating educational institution for women in the country, an institution that has never closed its doors through thick and thin, an institution that has always and will always prize both academic rigor and service to humanity, an institution that has welcomed every qualified student regardless of color, creed, or social standing, an institution that saw 12% increases in enrollment at both the academy and the college this year, which represents record-breaking enrollment in the college and necessitated the building of the McHugh Sisters Flats, so named by a very generous donor. An institution that stands strong today because of the work of my 19 predecessors and the scores of women and men who shared their dedication to the institution. An institution that remains firm in its commitment to single gender education. This year, the seniors made a t-shirt that says, dead before co-ed. They gave me one. I assured them that they were preaching to the converted. Every time I walk past Main Hall, I am inspired as I look up at the sign that reads, Salem College, founded 1772, a liberal arts college for women. Imagine, imagine what it took. It took vision. It took courage, it took boldness, it took leadership, it took unity, it took a commitment to learning, it took dedication, it took practical know-how. In short, it took both idealism and pragmatism working together. And it took every member of the community working together just as today our community depends on the work of faculty, staff, trustees, visitors, alumni, volunteers, and friends, a veritable army of people who serve our wonderful students. And every role was and is essential and valued. As Adelaide Fries reports in her book, The Road to Salem, among the brethren, all work is honorable, and if a man or woman is doing something that needs to be done, the task is considered equal with the other tasks, no matter what it be. We lay little stress on the nature of the work, but much on whether a person is industrious and honest. Some things 
have not changed. It took a recognition that girls and women needed and deserved the same quality of education that boys and men received and that they needed it at an early age. We are thus blessed to this day to have both a prep school, Salem Academy, and a, and a college, Salem College, as constituent parts of our beloved institution. And I do hope that that seven-year-old will enroll at both the academy and the college. We're ready, I think. Salem was led by highly educated men, continues Dr. Fries. The brethren Groff and Tiersch had been students at the University of Jena and brother Marshall at the University of Leipzig, two of Europe's leading centers of learning, it should be noted. But, continues Dr. Fries, instead of making them despise the needs of little children, it made them so alive to the value of education that they started schools for the boys and girls of Salem as soon as there were children who were old enough to learn their letters. When one plants a seed, it is interesting to watch it come up and grow and develop. The tuition back then was one shilling per week. Some things have changed. What has not changed is an unwavering dedication to learning. The term liberal arts, artes liberales in Latin, is the education worthy of a free person in order to take an active role in civic life. Contrary to popular belief, freeborn girls were as likely as were boys to receive formal education, especially during the time of the Roman Empire. The curriculum comprised grammar, logic, and rhetoric, which in the Middle Ages became known as the trivium, and arithmetic, geometry, Paula Young's very happy about that, astronomy, and music, which in the Middle Ages became known as the quadrivium. The term liberal arts today includes the humanities, the natural sciences, and the social sciences. A liberal arts education arms our students with the verbal and math skills that prepare them for life and for any career they may choose. Employers love to hire students who can read perceptively, write clearly, speak eloquently, think critically, and do the math, as the saying goes. Our Greek motto, knowledge and virtue, stands behind us every day. Our seal, designed in 1907 by a student named Dorothy Doe, bears the three Greek letters Gamma, Kappa, Delta, which Bishop Ron Toller gave to the class of 1907 as its motto. Thanks to some brilliant detective work on the part of Deborah Austin, a classics major here at Salem College and a member of the class of 1978, we now have deeper insight into the meaning of our seal. Reverend Austin figured out that Kappa stands for Chi, the Greek word meaning and, that Gamma stands for Gnosis, the Greek word meaning knowledge, and Delta, Delta stands for dikaiosune, the Greek word for justice, righteousness, or virtue. These concepts could not be more closely connected both to our Moravian heritage and to our purpose in the 21st century. Acquiring knowledge and living lives that benefit other people acquiring knowledge and using it in the service of virtuous causes, acquiring knowledge and putting ourselves to work on alleviating and eliminating poverty, hunger, disease, violence, discrimination, and bullying in school and in the workplace. Imagine what we can do as we begin to write the next quarter century of Salem's history. It is our privilege and our responsibility to ensure that Salem's future shines as brilliantly as does her past. The task is entrusted to us, 
who follow in the many footsteps of our idealistic and practical predecessors. Do what we must, do what we can, and do what we shall. What will it take? It will take vision. It will take courage. It will take boldness. It will take leadership. It will take unity. It will take a commitment to learning. It will take dedication. It will take practical know-how. And it will take every member of the community working together. That may sound familiar. Like the Janus figure, we look simultaneously to our past and to our future a future in which we must invest all our moral resources as we come together as one. At our core is the very same boldness of purpose that distinguish our Moravian forebears. At the same time, we must prepare our students for lives of purpose in the modern world. We are in the process of planning for a new sciences and mathematics building one wing of which has already been funded by a very generous donor in honor of alumna and trustee Lucy Rose, class of 76. Yes. <laughs> we are building this building so that our students, the next generation of scientific researchers, professors, and physicians, will have the very best tools and resources at their disposal. They deserve no less. The society they will serve deserves no less. But the modern world and the ancient world are not separate entities. Modern learning builds on all that the scholars of the past so diligently and so faithfully laid out. Modern day science did not appear ex nihilo, nor did modern day politics. As we create the knowledge of the future, we are building on knowledge acquired in the past. We honor that past, even as we expand upon it. This fall, we are bringing back to Salem the study of German, the study of Latin, and the study of Greek even as we plan for that state-of-the-art 21st century science and math building. Imagine, imagine the path our forebears took. Imagine the path that lies before us. Today we stand at the intersection of our glorious past and our exciting future, a future that is ours to dream, to shape, and to realize. Let us do so with vision, with courage, and with boldness, because we owe nothing less to the women and men of purpose who preceded us, to the women and men of purpose who are our contemporaries, and to the women and men of purpose who will follow us. In the words of the Moravian motto, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, love. Thank you very much.
Let us now go forth with the words from the breastplate of St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland. May you be blessed with the strength of heaven, the light of the sun and the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of the wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of earth, and the firmness of rock. Amen. <laughs>